On 23rd November, that is a couple of days back, in the Afa region of northern Ethiopia, there is a volcano named Heli Gubbi Volcano. This was supposed to be a dormant, a silent volcano for nearly 12,000 years. And suddenly it woke up, started erupting. It was chaos for the people in the nearby Avtera district. The volcano exploded like a bomb. A thick plume of ash shot almost 14 kilometers into the sky, high enough to enter the same airspace where international flights travel. In nearby villages of the Avdera district, ash fell like grey snow. Residents started coughing, animals couldn't find clean water or grass, and the whole area looked like it was covered in dust. Now, high-speed winds, almost 100 to 120 km per hour, picked up this ash from Ethiopia and carried it across the Red Sea. From there, the ash travelled over Yemen, Oman, and then moved over the Arabian Sea. This giant ash plume was visible even from space. Satellites saw a long trail of sulfur dioxide and volcanic particles stretching over 3,700 kilometers. Around 11 p.m. on Monday, the ash cloud entered India through Gujarat. Then it slowly drifted towards Rajasthan, Delhi, Haryana and Punjab. Now, this ash cloud was mostly sulfur dioxide with low to moderate volcanic ash. But the point here to note is that this volcanic ash was too high. As I said, the volcano shot the plume almost 14 kilometers up, that is around 45,000 feet. And most domestic flights fly below 33,000 feet. But international flights, especially those around the United States and Middle East, fly much higher, right where the ash was floating. Now imagine a volcanic plume reaching 14 kilometers straight into the sky. The raw force behind it is honestly mind blowing. It's almost like seeing nature launch a rocket. Deep inside the volcano, magma holds dissolved gases, mainly water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur gases. When pressure builds up, it suddenly releases, similar to if you shake a soda bottle before opening. But this one is on a planet scale. At that height, the plume is entering upper troposphere, which is 10 to 12 kilometers, and lower stratosphere, which is at more than 12 kilometers. Now, this is where volcanic ash can travel worldwide, block sunlight, cause cooling, disrupt aviation because jets also cruise around 10 to 12 kilometers. Since this volcano had never erupted in recorded history, this means the entire rift system is extremely active. I am talking about this line. I have made a video on this topic. Is Africa splitting into two continents? There I have explained this topic. So the Ethiopian rift and the Africa splitting into two continents are directly linked. And it's one of the biggest geological events happening on Earth right now. The Ethiopian rift is part of the East African rift system. This is the exact place where Africa is slowly breaking into two large land masses. Nubian continental plate, which is West Africa, and Somali continental plate, which is East Africa. This rifting is what will eventually create a new ocean in the middle of Africa, exactly like how the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden formed long ago. Of course, all these things will happen after thousands of years. We won't be here to see it. So the main thing to understand is that Ethiopia sits on a hot spot called the Afar Triple Junction, where three plates are pulling apart, Nubian Plate, Somali Plate and the Arabian Plate. So these three plates meet in one of the most violent tectonic zones on Earth, Nubian Plate pulling west, Somali Plate pulling east and the Arabian Plate pulling northeast. All three are moving away from each other. This creates a Y-shaped tear in the crust. And this tear is why volcanic eruptions here have insane vertical thrust. When continental plates pull apart, the mantle comes closer to the surface. Huge amount of gas-rich magma accumulates. Pressure becomes explosive. When it releases, massive thrust upwards. That is why the volcanic plume went till 14 km high straight into the stratosphere. So, Ethiopia is basically sitting on a natural pressure valve. By 10.30 pm on Tuesday, the Indian Meteorological Department confirmed through satellite images that the ash plume had completely exited India and was drifting towards China. Now this eruption reminds us how connected our planet truly is. A volcano in a remote corner of Ethiopia can send a cloud all the way to India and then China, affecting global flights and even change the composition of the atmosphere for a few days. And the lesson that we learn from here is that Nature may be silent for thousands of years, but when it speaks, the whole world listens. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.